Did you know that kinky wellness is integral to your self-development? Hi, welcome to The Partition, home of kinky wellness, the ultimate destination to explore the integral connection between kinky wellness and your personal development. I'm your host and kinky wellness coach, Dana Shergill, and I'm here to show why kinky sexual wellness deserves a rightful spot within the wellness conversation. Don't forget to join me each Monday as I bring on a special guest to dive into specific aspects of kinky wellness, So let's strip away the shame and taboo together and have an open conversation about it. Hey, and welcome back. Before I get into today's topic, I just want to start by sharing some gratitude. Because not only was my birthday yesterday, and I'm very grateful to be alive, but on May 27th, the partition Home of Kinky Wellness was officially published in her first major news outlet, which was in the Toronto Sun. So, yes, I'm very excited about that. And the article is titled Kinky Wellness Might Be Exactly What You Need and can be found online or on page 14 if you manage to get a copy. Now, what's cool about this is that although I did the interview for Toronto Sun, It is syndicated, so you might find me in the Sudbury Sun and the Calvary Sun, Vancouver Sun. So yeah, I'm in a couple of places, which I'm very, very excited for and very grateful. And since my birthday fell in the same week of this release, I truly do consider this to be an early birthday gift because you and I both know how much I want to spread the truths and benefits of kinky wellness. Now, I originally tried to share the link on my Instagram But due to Canadian censorship laws, right, I wasn't able to share the link in my story. So instead, I left the link for the article in the description below so you can read it for yourself. And it's not a long read, so please do read it and let me know your thoughts. And if you want to go the extra mile and give me an extra, you know, little birthday gift of sorts, please feel free to share the article with your friends and family. But as for today's topic, we're going to be talking a little bit about oral health care and we're going to touch on lubricant toxins in relation to sexual wellness. Because truthfully, after Serena came on the show, I kept thinking about that statement she made, you know, about if women just woke up one day and just loved themselves, that the economy would collapse because people would stop buying useless products that, you know, only benefit the people selling them. And it made me think about the products that we have within the sexual wellness space that may be doing this too. And as I was thinking about it, I kept coming back to that narrative around spit versus lube and whether or not people should or should not use their saliva as a lubricant. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, growing up, I do remember seeing articles in sexual wellness magazines that said things like, Don't use your spit as a lubricant because it could be dirty. It could have bacteria in it. It could be this. It could be that. And although this statement is certainly true in some cases, because you and I both know that there are definitely people out there who do use their spit without having a proper oral health care routine. But you also need to understand that, yes, STIs can still be transmitted through saliva. So this includes things like chlamydia, gonorrhea, HPV syphilis, and herpes. Just because you use spit doesn't mean that you're protecting yourself more or less than if you use lube. But I also feel that statements that say don't use bit because of X, Y, Z, you know, I feel like these statements do have an element of fear mongering to them. Because when you think about it, hasn't spit been the OG lube for years and years and years and years and years, all the way up until someone figured out that you can use more natural lubricants like coconut oil. And then somewhere along the way from that, capitalism created a market for sexual lubricants of all kinds. Now, before you get your knickers in a knot, I'm not saying that lube isn't good for you. Lube is great. Lube is our friend. Lube is positive. And it's clear that saliva doesn't always have that slippery quality that lubricants have, and it doesn't last as long, right? But does that mean that lube is better? Because let's remember, not all lubes are created equal, and some products are better than others. And what I find ironic is that many lubricants on the market have chemicals in them that are just plain toxic and far worse than just dirty saliva. For instance, 
flavored lubes called something called glucose, which is a sugar, right? But glucose can cause some serious yeast infections. And another chemical found in many lubes, such as KY jelly, is propylene glycol, which is a chemical that comes from petroleum. And not only can you find this in certain lubes, you can also find this chemical in antifreeze and in liquids like coffee-based drinks and pops, which we touched a little bit on in our banned food episode. But in the lube form, propylene glycol has been associated with skin irritations, contact dermatitis, and hives. Also, are we at a point, do I have to say this over again, guys? Like, isn't anything to do with gas, petroleum? That just doesn't sound right, right? Like, that's just, that can't be me. We have to just agree or agree to disagree that gas and humans just don't mix. But anyways, another big no-no when it comes to chemicals found in lubes is parabens. Now, I do think that we touch base on this again in the banned foods one, but I just want you to take notice that although our FDA system considers it safe, it has been banned in the EU since 2015. Now, parabens are used as a preservative, but again, regardless if it's in food form or lube, parabens have been linked to breast cancer and fetal development issues, among a ton of other health issues. Now, another paraben that's really, really bad is methylparaben, which is a specific paraben which is used in many personal care products to increase the shelf life because of its antifungal and antibacterial properties. But again, This has been linked to be an endocrine disruptor and even make cancer cells grow faster. Parabens are also something that can give people allergic reactions to. So if you are allergic to parabens, it can show up as hives, itchiness, rashes, flaky or peeling skin or swelling. So if you're thinking right now, oh, this kind of sounds like me. I use certain lubes and then, you know, hives break out or I get red. This is your moment to go talk to your doctor and get an allergen patch test for parabens. Other potentially toxic ingredients in lubes are things like glycerin, which can contribute to yeast infections, chlorhydric glucinate, which although it is an antibacterial, this chemical can also kill healthy vaginal bacteria, which then makes women more susceptible to yeast infections and other bacteria issues. Then we have our debate over silicone products. Some people love them. Some people hate them. But regardless of where you sit on that scale, at the end of the day, silicone products are full of microplastics. Now, a couple of the microplastics here, I I might butcher this, but it's cytal demithericorn and demithericorn. And as we know, microplastics are not just bad for us, but they're also bad for our planet, our water, everything. And if you didn't know, more and more babies, unfortunately, are currently being born with more and more microplastics in them. But also silicone products can release something called Silolax, which also have been linked to endocrine disruptors and cancer. So again, what's worse, a person who may or may not have brushed their teeth or these listed chemicals? Because as far as I'm concerned, I will definitely argue that these chemicals are far worse than spit. And I say that because, quite frankly, I live in Canada. And as far as I know, most, maybe not all, but most Canadians do try to take good care of their oral health. It's something that we were raised with. It's something that we see on TV all the time. So it is something that we do take care of. So when it comes to oral sex and everything that it entails, I do hope that you are someone who has high enough standards that you and anyone you get it on with does have a decent level of oral health care. And if you are someone who's getting it on with someone who has terrible oral health, then that's on you. That's your risk. And that's really not something you can complain about later. But I get it. Oral health care, we've been taught, is just brushing and flossing. But it is more than that. So I do want to take a moment here to share some additional oral health care that does go beyond brushing and flossing. Because to keep it simple, I'm just going to assume that everyone listening here has at least heard about the importance of brushing and flossing their teeth. But let me ask you, have you heard of oil pulling and tongue scraping? If not, that's totally okay because I'm going to talk about it now. Now, oil pulling is something that I've been doing for about a year. And it is an ancient ayurvedic practice that involves swishing oil, such as coconut oil, in your mouth from about 15 to 20 minutes. 
Now, online, it does say that you can use other types of oil like sesame, but I don't know anything on sesame oil. So I always stick to coconut oil and everyone else that I know who does oil pulling also uses coconut oil. So to keep it simple, I would just suggest using coconut oil. But basically what you do is you take whatever amount you want and you put it in your mouth. Some people do a teaspoon. Some people do a tablespoon. Some people put a whole bunch in their mouth. It's really up to you. But the benefits of oil pulling is that it can help with your gum health because it helps reduce inflammation. It can help reduce harmful bacteria in your mouth, which will help you decrease the risks of bad breath, oral infection, cavities, and gum disease. Oil pulling also helps remove surface stains from your teeth, which will help you to have a brighter smile. And by removing surface stains, it can also help reduce that plaque buildup. And when you reduce plaque buildup, that's going to help your tooth from decaying. And beyond helping your teeth, oil pulling is believed to help remove toxins from your body, improve sinus health, boost immune health, and give clearer skin. Because again, you are removing and decreasing bad bacteria in your body. Then we have something called tongue scraping, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? But it's the practice of using a tool to clean the surface of your tongue. Now, tools for this can come in different shapes, different sizes, different material. But mine is a metal one that's shaped like a half moon, but you can choose whatever one you want. Just Google it. But when it comes to teeth scraping, I would suggest doing it twice a day. And basically what you do is you stick out your tongue and you place the scraper as far back as it can go. Then you gently pull the scraper forward, which is scraping all that stuff off your tongue. Then you rinse it off and repeat until you've cleaned the entire surface of your tongue. But something to keep in mind is that you don't need a lot of pressure for this, so be gentle to avoid irritating your tongue. Also, if you are someone with a really bad gag reflex, you again, you don't need to go back all the way. You can just go where you are comfortable, so that can be at the front or the middle. It just goes up to you. But the benefits of tongue cleaning or tongue scraping is that it helps remove bad breath bacteria. It can also help your taste, which is cool, right? Because it's getting all that stuff down. So give it a try because by adding oil pulling and tongue scraping to your daily oral health routine, you're only going to give yourself a more thorough cleaning that's not only going to help you, but the person you want to put your mouth on. But what do you think about spit versus lube? Do you think our sexual wellness market has overblown how dangerous spit can be? Do you think it's just people capitalizing on an opportunity? Or is there more to spit that I don't know? And if there is, or if you or someone you know that has more information on spit in general, you know, I would certainly love to talk to you or them. So don't be afraid to reach out by email or contact me through Instagram. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the spit versus lube debate. Because personally, I do think that chemicals are worse than spit. But that's all I have for today and my thoughts on spit and oral health in general. I hope you learned some oral health tips if you didn't know what tongue scraping or oil pulling was. But as for next week, the partition is taking a week off and we'll be back on the week of June 10th. So in the meantime, take this as an opportunity to catch up with the episodes you haven't heard before and get that kinky wellness discussion going with your friends and family. And if you have any questions or any topics that you'd like to learn next, please let me know on Instagram or leave a comment below. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Take care of yourself. And as always, stay kinky.